so we deal with the, with this fly. Uh, we have another uh, challenge. We still don't have a solution for it. It's, it's a fungus that grows on the olive leaf, and a lot of the olive leaves drop from that fungus. Uh, so that, of course, for 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 those of you who know farming, the leaf is the kitchen where the fruit is being made. Uh, it's uh, it's it's the, the 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 life of the, of the fruit. So if we don't, the less leaves we have, the less olives we have. So we are engaged in, in various methods. John thinks maybe into the crop is is one of the solutions. But this is something one of the, the researches we are engaging in, and we're engaging in in a seed bank for other crops and so on. So all these the, the main thing is that we want to help the farmers maximize their, uh, the use of on-farm resources towards maximum yield and use it from their farms without dependency on agrochemical industry. And the uh, social level, empowerment level, we try to pack into the fair trade uh, 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 industry, into the fair trade uh, 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 trading, uh, the, the maximum we can do. So we have Trees for Life program that plant trees in Palestine, micro loan programs that give loans to women to start working in, in some of these income generation projects. The olive harvest, we call it breaking the siege or breaking the isolation of the Palestinian communities from the rest of the world by bridging the communities with distance communities around the world. In the, fair trade, in the Trees for Life program, we planted 60,000 olive trees. And those olive trees are planted by either a premium of a dollar that's gone on the bottle of, of olive oil. Some of the olive oils that you buy has a dollar premium that goes back to the PFTA to plant trees. Or a sponsorship of, through grassroots organizations of $20 to plant trees. And they are planted through the, the Palestine Fair Trade Association. This January is planting season and we're planting 10,000 trees this January. And this is, uh, for the farmers, it's coming from grassroots, from coming people, from people who are interested in supporting them and interested in, in empowering them. And in, in, in our community, uh, it's, uh, it's invested in small farmers, starter farmers, or farmers who have lost uh, some of their trees to the settlement activities or the military activities to take a priority in, in the allocation of these trees. Uh, micro loan projects, uh, this is sun-drying tomatoes by women cooperatives. It gives $500 to $1,000 as a loan for a woman to start working in one of these cooperatives and, uh, and, uh, and producing. And these, uh, uh, the, the, these loans are repaid interest-free after two years back to PFTA and PFTA then reallocate them to a new participant. Uh, another thing that's been grassroots uh, finance. And, and creating an impact on the community. The harvest tours that they come, people come from around the world. Uh, we have an, a harvest festival, first Friday of every November of every year. And we have about uh, 150 to 200 internationals come to it every year, and thousands of farmers. The internationals uh, go and uh, work with the farmers uh, and uh, cultivate olives for a day or two based on their schedule and uh, they prepare lunches with them at the, in their kitchens and they, they eat lunches in their farms together and they come to the festival together and celebrate uh, with many celebration activities whether it's dance, whether it's performance, whether it's uh, storytelling from the farmers or uh, they go through the, uh, the facility, the press, uh, seeing the press, uh, the olive being pressed, uh, <coughs> there are women normally are uh, demonstrating the, the, how to make the couscous, how to make the zatar, how to make the product that they do. And uh, women are baking bread in front of the press and people are trying the olive oil with hot bread just coming from the stones and the olive oil is just coming off of the press. So it's a very, very festive, very intimate moment for all of us and for our farmers and to share this with international communities make it very uh, touching and that much more special. And this is what uh, working in, uh, culturally and in, in, in really bridging our communities together and, and bringing attention to the diversity of these communities because here we are, we, we have many Europeans and many Americans, Canadians and, and, and Palestinians all come together in interfaith communities and they are very diverse culturally but we are united by principles, we are united by certain sets of ethics and, and values 
and, uh, and we speak the same language. So that uh, breaks those dichotomies that, that the current discourse is creating between uh, with the West and the rest, and, uh, or the West and Islam, and, uh, and all these uh, uh, kind of, uh, of processes that we have been somewhat locked into. In Canaan Fair Trade, uh, well, before Canaan Fair Trade, we have a new program that Diane especially is very excited about. It's called uh, Green Track Palestine. I don't have it on my slide. But Green Track Palestine is a program to convert some of our farmers' tractors to run on falafel oil or vegetable oil. <laughs> so we are partnering with a German company that's going to supply the conversion kit, and we are raising funds for these conversion kits. We are wasting a lot of oil after we may eat a lot of falafel. And uh, <laughs> we're wasting a lot of oil that and we could use that instead of the diesel oil that we're burning these tractors and that could uh, save the farmer some, uh, some money. So we can do the, the, the filtering, all it needs is filtering. We can do the filtering of Canaan. We have a lot of filters for oil and uh, we can dedicate one for the, for the green track Palestine and offer it to the farmers. So that's going to be another empowerment program that we have. Uh, another program that we we can earn from Canaan's profit that we support directly is the Canaan uh, Scholarship Program. Canaan Scholarship is dedicated for creating community leadership. It gives 10 university scholarships every year to children of farmers. And those uh, children, are the, the, the high school students, are uh, selected based on their potential for leadership. They have to write an essay and uh, outline what they want to do in their lives and uh, their commitment to community service. And uh, there, uh, there are also some criteria that gives advantage to first college generation. If, if the student is the first person from that family to go to college, we give him a priority. And also we take into consideration the economic condition of the family. Uh, with these uh, scholarship recipients are engaged in leadership program. Uh, they, could, they have to commit for four summers of community service. And in those community services, it's not the idea that we want them to work at the end to repay us, but rather we engage them in uh, uh, skills uh, uh, generation and training so they become future leaders. Uh, we have them working on projects we, uh, along with interns that we bring from Europe and the United States together, and we are engaging in a leadership program for them. In, in the summer uh, program that they, they come into. Sometimes some of them we send them to other organizations that are uh, that can you take their services and uh, and help in guiding their development. Uh, another uh, aspect of Canaan uh, as as a company we look at ourselves as an incubator for social innovation, not just a company. So our employees are we invest in them, we invest in their training, we invest in their raising awareness, and we engage them in a whole sort of uh, production, trade, economy, and training programs so they become leaders themselves. And uh, uh, the, the, the end result is not that they will be locked in Canaan for all of their life. Hopefully they will take their lives into new dimensions and beyond Canaan uh, abilities and, and visions and dreams. One of the benefits of working at Canaan is after 10 years of service, an employee can qualify for $100,000 interest-free loan for, uh, to start his or her uh, social entrepreneurship project. And uh, to, to qualify for such a grant or such loan, the, the employee needs to uh, identify a social or environmental problem and develop a business plan to address that problem and, in a, a, through a, a business model. So this is something that's really helping our employees to think beyond a job, that this is a, a, an opportunity, this is a stage in their life that they can uh, think uh, creatively, think to become leaders, think to become creators uh, on their own. And we will support them to uh, take, take uh, this knowledge in a new direction. Uh, the wider impact of, of, of the fair trade in Palestine, I would like, I'll touch on these uh, uh, three aspects on what we see, I can identify that are uh, making, we are making a difference, economic empowerment, social empowerment, and social and cultural transformation. 
Uh, the guy that you see in this uh, slide is Mahmoud Isa. He's from a village of Anin, uh, just west of Jenin. And uh, first time I met Mahmoud Isa was in summer of 2006. He invited me to speak to the, the farmers in the village. He, they had heard about Canaan fair trade and they really want the benefit of Canaan, of, of, of fair trade and what fair trade has to offer. And they want to organize their farmers to uh, for, to build a, a fair trade co-op. So that's the first time I met him. He was the one who called for the meeting and brought in the farmers. At the time, uh, Mahmoud was working in Israel and without a permit. So working without a permit, he was not coming home other than once every two months because he would risk being arrested if he would dare to cross the border every day. So he was sleeping in the workshop and hardly, I mean, uh, he has five kids and a wife and he would come home once every two months. Once after 2006, after the harvest of 2006, Mahmoud now lived with his wife and he and, he, and his wife work in the farm and they can afford a living from the farm and they're invested in the farm actually, increasing the farm and putting all of their energy into the farm. And the, in the economic uh, s s sphere, the sustainable prices affected the whole structure of the local market economy. When we set the, the minimum price as 15 shekels in 2004, we, we paid 15 shekels in 2004, we paid 15 shekels in 2005, and in 2006 we started paying uh, 16 to 18 shekels. By 2006, the market price has risen to 14 shekels. So the market price has risen close to what we called for minimum price two years later after the, the start of the project. Today, the market price in Palestine for olive oil is about six shekels, and we are paying seven shekels. I mean, sorry, six dollars or uh, 22 shekels, and we are paying 25 shekels. So you can see the difference. We've, we are able to impact not only the participant farmers, but rather all of the small farmers in Palestine. Because what we've done is we look at what was driving the prices down. I mean, especially now. I mean, before, yes, we understand there was a, a period of siege. But now, like in 2006, people were, the, the traders were trying to coordinate between themselves not to buy un, uh, until later after the harvest because farmers, normally small farmers, every crop finances the next crop, every harvest finances the next crop. And the olive harvest comes in November, which is a very important harvest for them because main seeding and planting is activity is in December after the main rain. The, 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 the first rain comes late, late November, early December, and they plant the beginning of December through the, up until December 25. That's the planting season. And if they don't sell their olive oil, then they don't have money to plant their next crops, their, their wheat, their chickpeas, their lentils, all of these crops, that, the grains that they, they cultivate, or the vegetables, they prepare for the vegetables. So by January, they are in debt if they don't sell their olive oil. They go to the suppliers and they buy fertilizers and, uh, and, uh, and seeds, and they are in debt. And that's when these traders used to start collecting the olive oil. So they used to coordinate to drive the prices down. Now Canaan goes and make a sizable purchases with fair uh, prices and, and, and pay promptly, so undercuts these, these, uh, these, these schemes and protect the farmers. So that's the main thing is that safeguard the small uh, the, the small farmers to, for the, the market for the benefit of the small farmers. That's what we were able to to do. Also, we're creating uh, oppor job opportunities at our plant and at the processing and the suppliers' plants. All of these new job opportunities are being created. Uh, work opportunities for women. 